In this edition of the Red and Blue Political Roundup, U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley says she is stepping down, an announcement that caught some members of the Trump administration by surprise. CBS News White House correspondent Weijia Jiang reports. You've been fantastic, you're my friend, and I just, on behalf of the country, I want to thank you for a great job. President Trump piled on the praise as he announced U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley will leave the administration at the end of the year. She's made it a very glamorous position. She's made it a, a more important, more importantly, a more important position. The president brushed off questions about the timing of the news less than one month before the midterm elections. Haley said she thinks it's time for fresh energy and quickly squashed Washed widespread speculation. She's eyeing a presidential bid. And I will say this um, for all of you that are going to ask about 2020. No, I'm not running for 2020. Mr. Trump said Haley first brought up resigning six months ago, but White House officials tell CBS News it was a closely guarded secret, even taking top advisors John Bolton and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo by surprise. The president said he could name a replacement in two to three weeks and didn't rule out considering someone close to home. I think Ivanka would be incredible. That doesn't mean I'd, you know, I'd, I'd pick her because you'd be accused of nepotism. Ivanka later said she would not replace Haley. Haley's exit marks a total overhaul of Mr. Trump's original foreign policy team. You are going to see a change in the way we do business. Haley no quickly became a star harder, cabinet no. member and staunch defender of the president, playing key roles in sanctioning North Korea and pulling the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal. Last month, Haley penned an op-ed in the Washington Post, slamming an anonymous colleague who wrote a critical op-ed for the New York Times. Haley said, I don't agree with the president on everything. When there is a disagreement, I pick up the phone and call him or meet with him in person. Haley's announcement has set off a wild guessing game as to why she is leaving now. Some point to a development yesterday when a watchdog group called for an investigation into Haley's use of private jets. There are also rumors that she's returning to South Carolina where she was formerly governor to replace Senator Lindsey Graham if he takes a cabinet position in the administration. And finally, Haley told the president she's returning to the private sector, so it's possible she wants to make some money. Tanya? Who knows? We just Jang, thank you so much. And for more on this, I want to bring in Julia Manchester. She is a reporter for The Hill. Hi, Julia. Thanks for being with us. So how are lawmakers reacting to news of Haley's upcoming exit from the Trump administration right ahead of midterms? Yeah, I think you're seeing a mixture of reaction. A lot of Republican lawmakers are praising her credentials and how well they say she performed in the Trump administration. However, the timing here is interesting. It comes less than a month before the midterms, and it comes ahead of the 2020 presidential elections. There's been some speculation that she'd potentially run in 2020, but I don't think that's plausible at this point. However, I think this move does definitely show that Haley does potentially have future political ambitions. You know, she she was able to represent the Trump administration in the U.N., but at the same time differentiate herself from a lot of the, I guess, controversy the administration has spurred. You know, we've seen that the, uh, Nikki Haley has sided with the Trump administration, especially when it comes to their tough talk on Iran and su staunch support of Israel. However, they've, she's also represented the Trump administration to the, I guess, chagrin of other um, uh, countries in the U.N. You know, she famously said that they'd be taking names in the U.N. However, I think a lot of U.N. Um, UN representatives actually really appreciated Haley's presence in the body. You know, she was able to, um, I guess you could say, calm their fears of um, President, calm any reservations they would have of President Trump, because she does come from that more establishment, traditional wing of the Republican Party. Yeah, I mean, is it a stretch to say she was essentially the most popular member of his cabinet? I mean, she enjoyed strong approval ratings from both Republicans and and Democrats. And I know she said she's not considering a run in 2020, but there are still a lot of sort of moderate conservatives out there who are saying, hey, a Haley Kasich ticket or a Haley Murkowski ticket could be uh, just what we need. <laughs> 
I think that's definitely a never Trump <laughs> fantasy. However, I think at this point, Republicans are rallied, you know, around President Trump. You know, you may have people that have issues with some of his policies or some of his rhetoric, but I think for 2020, they essentially have their money on him. <laughs> However, it's very possible that she could launch something in 2024. Yes, no, and I was just thinking of that sort of moderate wing of the Republican Party that yeah. hasn't always been on board the Trump mm -hmm. train, um, quietly, but not always fully <laughs> on board. Um, so, Julia, the president said he plans on announcing a replacement sometime before midterms. On Air Force One Tuesday evening, he told reporters he has a short list and confirmed that former aide Dina Powell was on it. Our Major Garrett reports that former Connecticut senator and vice presidential nominee Joe Lieberman is also being considered considered, what would they each bring to the administration? And more broadly, what do you think he's looking for in his next U.N. ambassador? I mean, we know that John Bolton, for instance, doesn't think much of, much of the U.N. and would happily sort of, you know, marginalize the position, I'm sure. So what does President Trump think? Well, you know, it's interesting what kind of administration Haley's leaving. She left a very administration um, compared, a different administration compared to the one that she came into. You know, we see more, um, I guess, hawkish members such as John Bolton and Mike Pompeo in um, place, and those were the people she was working with. However, in looking at Dina Powell or Joe Lieberman, I think the president is looking for maybe a moderating force in that position or someone who's more um, potentially, you know, uh, uh, establishment and able to reach out to both sides. And Dina Powell, you know, she has experience in global finance working at Go Goldman Sachs. When she was um, in the administration, she worked quite a bit on the Middle East, and that is very much an area that the Trump administration is focused on. She also comes from the um, D Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump wing of the White House. She's very much an ally of them and former economic advisor G Gary Cohn. So definitely more of a moderating voice compared to that of John John Bolton and Joe Lieberman, same thing. I think someone who um, does have foreign policy experience. He worked on the Homeland Security Committee when he was a senator and has much experience in that area. So I would say more of establishment picks and people who have, I guess, been involved in directly in politics for a while. And, you know, Mr. Trump and top members of his party are trying to bolster their base, obviously, ahead of Election Day. They're branding Democrats as an angry mob after Justice Kavanaugh's contentious confirmation to the Supreme Court. So is this the kind of message you expect the White House and Republicans to continue to push until November? Well, I really think they have to. You know, the Republicans are in a time where they fulfilled a major campaign promise of getting the Supreme Court to lean to a conservative side and appointing that conservative justice. And they're also running in a time of a really good economy. So I think at that point, you know, Republican voters don't really have much to be angered or fired up about, whereas Democratic voters have been angered the, from the moment President Trump was elected. So they're definitely fired up to go to the polls. So I think in that regard, they need to find something that will keep their base fired up. So I think they use um, they, they are going to flash these images of protesters during the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings um, in a series of ads, and they're going to try to keep that that those vision that picture fresh in the minds of Republican voters. Julia Manchester, thank you for your time.